and welcome to um, Human Reproduction Lesson 3 on Fertilisation. Before you start, please can you complete part one of the fertilisation activity um, and pause the video, do that if you haven't yet. Um, and if you're having a bad day, remember that you were once the winning sperm. Okay, so learning objectives for this session is for you to be able to recall what fertilisation is and where it occurs. Uh, describe fertilisation, including capacitation, the acrosome reaction, penetration and the cortical reaction. And explain how the cortical reaction actually prevents polyspermy. And then I'd like you to apply your understanding to answer exam questions later in the activity. So fertilisation, uh, what is it and where does it occur? It's basically where you have fusion of the spermatozoa and also the secondary oocytes. Um, and this occurs in the fallopian tubes. So we'll look more at where it occurs in a second, but if we were to look at the structure of a sperm cell, we've got three key parts. We've got a head, a midsection, and also a tail. And we've got um, specialized organelles that you find within each of those. So within the head section, we've got this specialised organelle called an acrosome. This is a specialised or modified lysosome. It contains hydrolytic enzymes that are going to help digest through the zona pellucida layer later. Uh, we've also got a haploid nucleus. Okay, It's a really good top tip for your exams to always call uh, in gametes to call the nucleus haploid. So just get into a good habit of doing that uh, and it just will mean that you're more likely to pick up marks in your exam. In the midsection, we've got mitochondria. These mitochondria synthesize ATP, and the ATP is used by the flagellum for movement. To explain how the sperm travel to meet the secondary oocyte after being deposited in the vagina, just at the base of the cervix here. Okay, so what's going to happen is that the sperm will then swim up through the cervix, through the uterus, into the fallopian tubes. And as we said in the last lesson about um, oogenesis, secondary oocytes are released after ovulation and travel oops, down the ovary. Okay, And it's at this point here in the fallopian tubes where fertilization occurs. So this point here where sperm and egg or sperm and secondary oocyte, we're not going to call them eggs, will meet. Um, and if they fuse with each other, can produce a zygote. We'll talk more about this next week, but that zygote, that fertilised uh, secondary, or that fertilised ovum, um, will then be able to divide into a small cluster of cells. And that small cluster of cells will move back down into the uterus and will embed in the vascular layer called the endometrium. Okay, um, But again, more on that when we cover pregnancy later. So let's look at what happens when the sperm or the spermatozoa actually meets the secondary oocyte. And we've got four key stages to this. I'm going to run through them briefly here and then you guys will watch more detailed videos on them after. So capacitation is the first thing to happen. And this is basically where we get changes in the membrane of the acrosome. Um, and you're basically removing glycoproteins and making the membrane more fluid, more permeable. Now, what that means is that the membrane of the acrosome is now more fluid to then allow for the acrosome reaction. Now, the acrosome reaction is where the acrosome moves to the cell surface membrane, to the sperm cell surface membrane, and releases hydrolytic enzymes through exocytosis. Okay, so you might remember when we spoke about transport across membranes, exocytosis was one of them, so bulk transport of stuff out of a, a cell. Um, so the acrosome reaction is basically exocytosis of the uh, hydrolytic enzymes from the acrosome. And it digests through a jelly-like layer called the zona pellucida. So we've actually got a couple of layers here just to mention. So this big red layer on the outside here this is basically follicle cells left over from the secondary follicle after ovulation. The sorry, the mature follicle, the graphion follicle. Let me just change that. The graphion follicle uh, ruptures, and it releases um, the secondary oocyte along with some of the cells from the follicle. So that generates this layer here, this red layer on the outside. Uh, we've then got the zona pellucida, which is this yellow layer just on the inside of that. And the zona pellucida is basically what the hydrolytic enzymes digest through um, during the acrosome reaction. 
Okay, penetration is the next stage, and this is where the cell membrane of the secondary oocyte and sperm fuse, and the haploid nucleus of the sperm moves to the secondary oocyte haploid nucleus. Okay, and finally, we want to make sure that no more sperm um, deposit their haploid nuclei into that secondary oocyte. So here's the secondary oocyte, by the way, this big cell here. Um, and you can see here we've got a haploid nucleus from the sperm moving into that secondary oocyte. The secondary oocyte would also have a haploid nucleus. Um, and the cortical reaction basically stops any more sperm cells from releasing haploid nuclei into that secondary oocyte. So what happens here is that the cortical granules, which are these little um, vesicles, so membrane-bound sort of enzymes within these vesicles, fuse with the cell surface membrane. So again, we've got a bit more exocytosis um, and it releases enzymes into this space here. And what those enzymes basically do is they generate a um, fertilization barrier and they stop any more sperm from uh, fusing with that secondary oocyte. Okay, so it prevents polyspermy. Poly meaning many sperm fertilizing the same secondary oocyte. Okay, I'd like you to pause the video and to complete part two of the fertilization activity. And you can see here we've got a beautiful image as well of uh, an electron micrograph. Um, so a picture using an electron microscope of um, many sperm trying to fertilize that same egg. Okay, and here's an exam question for you. So please pause the video and try this exam question. Okay, and let's have a look at the answers for this question here. So part A, we've got the corona radiata. Um, now this is, as we were saying a bit earlier, this is basically leftover follicle cells from the mature follicle. So during ovulation, when the mature follicle ruptures, um, some of the follicle cells are left surrounding the secondary oocyte, and that generates the corona radiata. And the corona radiata is really important because it releases chemicals that sort of direct the sperm to the right location. So it helps the sperm to find the secondary oocyte. We've then got the zona pellucida. So this is this jelly-like layer on the outside. And again, this is an important part to prevent polyspermy. The parts of the um, sperm, so section C is the acrosome. So again, a specialized organelle that you only find in sperm. And the acrosome is important to help the winning sperm to digest through the zona pellucida. So it releases um, hydrolytic enzymes, okay? So we might name some of these things like carbohydrases or proteases, and they digest, um, and a good thing to say here, they digest a pathway through the, um, the zona pellucida to allow the haploid nucleus to then fuse with the secondary oocyte. So let's just have a look and see some of the examiner's comments here. So the examiner's comments were that almost all candidates were awarded marks for labelling um, B in part A, but relatively few identified that that was the corona radiata. So do um, just make sure you memorise and sketch this structure out if you weren't sure of that either. Um, and most candidates correctly identified uh, in part B uh, the majority also described the release of relevant enzymes as well. So it was really just this part here that the examiner said that most people dropped marks on. Okay, so hopefully you guys feel confident about the learning objectives that you can recall fertilization, describe the key stages of it and apply your understanding to exam questions. I'd like you to um, continue with your fertilization activity to complete parts three and four, um, and also maybe have a think about what this picture is of. Um, so some of you might recognize this from the, the second video looking at fertilization, but, um, but what is that of? Maybe you can drop your teacher a message and let them know what you think it is. Okay, thank you, bye.